In this diagram, we've got all the main components of your computer system, and we've kind of taken them apart so we can look at them separately and individually. We've got the motherboard in the center, which is outlined by its main components that we're going to be going over. On the left here, we've got a removed floppy drive, we've got a removed hard drive, we've got a removed network card, um, modem, a memory stick, and a power supply. We've got a little bit of uh, information here about the power supply, because you're going to have mainly five different kinds of voltages coming out of the power supply, your typical power supply, and the different wire colors that they typically are. The red wires are going to be typically 5 volts DC. The blue wires are going to be negative 5 volts DC. The yellow wires are going to be 12 volts DC. The um, darker blue is going to... We've got blue and white that can be 12 volts DC. And we've got purple ones for 3.3 volts DC. So depending on the component is going to be how much... What particular uh, voltage they're going to be able to use and you're going to see that coming out of the power supply there's a bunch of cables that you're able to connect in there's going to be one that's going to be connecting directly to the motherboard to power up the motherboard and we can see that that we've got um, it outlined here in purple and this is just simply known as the ATX power supply connector so you would have the main connection running from your power supply into the ATX power supply connector and that would power up your motherboard. You supply power to your floppy drive, your hard drive or your disk drive. You would have other cables running out of the power supply which you would be able to snap in the back of either your floppy or your hard drive or whatever component that you needed to supply the power to. The next thing that we notice on the motherboard are all of these, they're called expansion slots. There's PCI slots, there's AGP slots. Now when we, we talk about motherboards, we often hear about the bus. There's an internal bus and there's an external bus. And what the internal bus is, it connects the CPU and memory and other components directly to the motherboard. So anything connected directly to the motherboard is part of the internal bus. And then we've got the external bus, which is for peripherals and attachments to the motherboard. And the bus simply is just how much information data is transferred. It's a system of transferring data and information. When we talk about bus, we're referred to the width of the bus. So the more, the wider the bus, the more information is able to travel along it. For the internal bus, which is also known as the system bus, there's four parts to it. The first one is power. And what the power bus is, it's the wires that provide electrical power to every part of the motherboard. We've got the control bus, which sends out timing signals so that other components of the motherboard can stay in time with the CPU. We've got the address bus, which is used for sending information on memory addressing. This information tells the components on the motherboard where to find instructions and data in memory. And we've got the data bus, which does exactly what it sounds like. It's responsible for transmitting the actual data between the system components. So there are four major parts of the internal bus. Now when it comes to the external bus, this is where these slots come in. And we've got a whole bunch of different kinds of slots that have been available on motherboards. It's important to familiarize yourself with the different ones. The oldest one would have been the 8-bit bus. Got a little bit of a chart here that we can look at and we can see this is for external buses. The 8-bit bus, we can see the bus size, which again we talked about was the amount of data that is able to transfer along the bus. And we've got the bus speed. Now th this um, particular 8-bit bus, it's not used anymore on computers but it does support eight interrupts and four DMA channels. And what DMA channels are is direct memory channels. Then after the 8-bit came along the ISA slots, which stands for Industry Standard Architecture. 
and this was um, first produced and used in almost all AT boards. It had uh, and what it has, it had um, it has 16 interrupts and eight DMA channels, and it used jumpers and dip switches to properly assign IRQs or DMAs. Now these days these ISA slots have almost completely disappeared from modern computers. The next one that we're going to talk about is the MCA slots. The MCA stands for Microchannel Architecture and this was first introduced as a 32-bit bus structure. It was developed by IBM for the PST computer. It featured bus mastering and 10 megahertz clock setting. Oh, we can just see it here, we'll highlight it. This is the clock speed that uh, this was able to process at. Another important note about MCAs are that it allows for software configurable IRQs and DMA assignment. But this is also one that's not used in modern computers. So we're going to move along and we're going to get to a more modern one, which is the EISA. And this is an extended ISA. And this allowed the basic ISA slot to compete with the MCA slot. And it has um, an 8 megahertz uh, bus clock. And it also allowed the software to configure the IRQ and DMAs. It also came with um, a 32-bit data bus. And as computers become more modern, we're seeing less and less of the EISAs. And we see the, the next one that we're going to be talking about is the VESA local bus, or the VLB. And this was in addition to 486 computer architecture, and it tied the clock speed of the CPU to the data bus. It was essentially an extension of the ISA. Now that this one's uh, mainly used for video controllers. The next one we're going to talk about is more familiar, which is the PCI slot. And it allows 32-bit or 64-bit buses, and this allows it to be either used in the Pentium or the 486 systems. The PCI bus is separated by the bus clock and the CPU clock. All PCI expansion cards contain a bridging circuit that allows the bus to run independently. It has a 33 megahertz bus speed. It was also introduced to plug and play and it no longer required jumpers. And the operating system is able to configure the IRQs, the DMAs, the IO addresses. It's used in um, pretty much all modern computers. The last one is the PCMCIA card, and this stands for Personal Computer Memory Card Association. And it's mainly used in laptop, laptops and other small computers. And there are three types of it. There's Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3. Type 1 cards are 3.3 millimeters thick. Type 2 cards are the most common and they're the five mil millimeters thickness and there's type 3 cards which are mainly used for hard disks and are 10.5 millimeters thick and what they do they simply slide into the side of your laptop and you're able to install and take them out uh, simply by just pushing them in and taking them out and the last uh, one that we're going to talk about is the AGP port which is the advanced graphics port and we can see that over here in green and what this is uh, mainly used for for graphics used for high resolution graphics as the name would apply so this is the advanced graphics port and these are the PCI slots so going back to our connectors we've got down here uh, highlighted in blue 
The bottom two that we can see here are red on the picture with a blue outline. They're IDE slots and this stands for Intelligent Drive Electronics. And this is almost exclusively used for fixed disk controllers. And when we look at them we also have extended IDEs which are um, acronymed EIDEs and this allows for four fixed disks to be installed onto one separate IDE channel and most computers have the EID hard drive controller built onto the motherboard itself so what you would do to connect this simply to your hard drive or to your disk drive you would simply run your cable and connect it from one to the other in order to make it work appropriately and the smaller one we see here would be connecting directly into the back of your floppy drive the same way that you're connecting into your hard drive and we see next to it with the purple outline is your BIOS chip and we've got your uh, battery here, your CMOS battery and you're able to access this depending on your computer when it starts up uh, sometimes you can press delete or you can press um, and the BIOS is accessible by F10, Alt, Exec, F1, F2, Control, Exec, Alt, Control, Alt depending on what which particular BIOS chip you have installed will be how you'd be able to access it and once again you're able to access it as your computer turns on you simply press typically it is the delete key and that would give you access to the, the BIOS and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later next we are going to look at um, the memory slots here which are highlighted in yellow when it comes to memory there's a lot of different types of memory and uh, RAM memory what it is it's uh, short for random access memory and it's a volatile type of memory which loses information when power is not present and we can see here the we're going to talk a little bit more about memory later on in the different types but for now when we're looking at the motherboard in order to determine which kind of memory there's basically two types there's the sims which are single inline memory module and they come in 30 or 72 pins and they're the DIMMs there's the and they stand for dual inline memory module and they come in 168 pins the next uh, thing we notice here on the motherboard is in light blue we've got the CPU slot or socket where we're able to place our CPU into it and as we can see we've got a little bit of a frame around here and this is actually for the fan which would attach on top of it in order to keep it cool and keep the system operating properly the two main types of attachments for the CPU is a PGA which is a pin grid array or socket and the second one is the SEC which is the single edge cartridge or slot oh, also on the motherboard we've got a system clock which um, depending on which motherboard where it's going to be held and what this does it synchronizes all parts of the operation of the PC and it's under IRQ0 we've also got a system speaker which we're able to um, which is part of the, the board and it lets us know about if there's errors when we're booting up and just getting back to the power supply for a second when we're connecting to the hard drive our hard drive connections it's called molex m-o-l-e-x when we're connecting from the power supply to the floppy drive connector it's called a mini molex so that's uh, m-o-l-e-x just something to keep in mind when we're using the power supply that we've got different kinds of uh, connectors that are coming out of it so we've got one for the motherboard we've got one for hard drive and we've got one for floppy drive along the top here we've got different kinds of ports and connectors that we're going to be looking at a little bit more detail later on 